Hello, my name is Marco Massinger and I'm a German cinematographer. I was invited by Fujinon to guide you through this blind lens test I shot in the summer of 2020. And we will have a look at high-end large format cinema prime lenses compared to the Fujinon Primista Cinema Zoom Lens family for large format. You now have the chance to judge with your own eyes which lens you think is more beautiful. I will always show you lens A and lens B both in full screen mode right after each other and then show a side by side comparison of both. All tests were conducted on a Red Monstro Ranger camera in 8K full sensor mode. For two reasons. First, it has the biggest large format sensor of them all and especially in the corners you really see the difference between lenses. Image circle is 46.3 millimeters. And the other reason was the 8K resolution gives us the possibility to do big magnifications of image areas that are of interest and are probably most relevant to define the character of a lens. You can not only judge bokeh behavior here, but you can both um, see lateral as well as longitudinal traumatic aberration. Lateral being on the plane of focus, longitudinal in front and behind the focus plane. Often chromatic aberration is perceived as unwanted color artifacts in high contrast image zones. Flare response or behavior here provoked by a tungsten gelled LED flashlight is a highly subjective topic and a matter of taste. But let's speak briefly about LED lighting for lens tests. The limited spectrum of wavelengths that LED sources emit actually proves to be a problem within lens testing. If you do your lens tests in your camera rental and light everything with LEDs, you have a look at your test charts and everything looks fine, no chromatic aberration, everything's great, you can still experience problems in the world outside. The sun, as well as HMI lamps, emit quite a big amount of ultraviolet light. And CMOS sensors are very, very responsive to that. And even infrared or near-infrared light plays a role in that, both emitted from tungsten lights as well as the sun. So what's the learning from this? Just bring some good old tungsten lights as well as some HMIs to your lens and camera test like we did in this blind lens test. Because if you're only lighting it with LEDs, a lot of the things that define the character of a lens stay hidden. Now, looking at those 135mm focal lengths, I not only encourage you to look at this once, but probably also stop here and look at the 50s once again. Judge the consistency of lens A and lens B, both in terms of aberrations, in terms of bokeh behavior, in terms of general look. And let's see if you can figure out some differences within the lens sets. As creating a consistent look amongst the lens set still proves to be difficult for manufacturers due to very different optical designs of wide-angle focal lengths and telephoto focal lengths. This is even true at the pinnacle of lens making that we are looking at here right now. Once again, I really want to encourage you not to look for the best lens, but for the lens that pleases your eye most. Play the video in 4K resolution, take some frame grabs and look at them side by side. Also, compare it to the other focal length to the 50mm. I won't spoil which lens, but there are drastic inconsistencies that really surprised myself when I was looking through my viewfinder on set. But even though, with both lenses performing at such a high level, we can really be happy to work in the golden age of lens making with so many great choices around fitting literally every taste and every need you can imagine. Just a short note when we're looking at the beautiful flares of both lenses here. Your sensor and your sensor cover glass can play a big role in the behavior as well as the color of those flares. We are closing in to the end of our blind lens test, where we will open the aperture fully on both lenses. That means the Premista stays at its T2.9 and the Prime opens up to full aperture. As this also will reveal which lens was which, I'm asking you, which lens did you like best? The reveal. On the left side we have the high-end Prime lens series now wide open. And the right side we always had the Fujinon Premista large format zooms. Looking at the magnified areas we notice Pushing a high-end prime lens to its brightest T-stop comes at a price, even these days. Chromatic aberrations get much more visible 
both lateral as well as longitudinal ones. When you use them wide open, the individual characteristics of different focal lengths within a prime set become more and more visible. This becomes especially apparent in the example of the black values and the contrast on the checkerboard between the 50 and 135 mm prime lens here in our test. Have a look. With all that said, I still think we have two amazing examples of modern cinema lens technology here. And I think both are viable choices for your projects. And as we're ending this lens test with some beautiful bokeh and flare images of the 135mm focal lengths of both lenses, I have to thank Fujinon for inviting me to narrate this blind lens test for you. And a big thanks goes also out to my cast and crew who joined me for this shoot that we undertook under severe safety precautions in COVID summer 2020 in Germany. And I want to thank you for tuning in and joining me for the adventure of a cinema lens blind test between the Fujinon Promista large format cinema zoom lenses and a set of modern high-end large format cinema primes. So thank you very much. Stay safe and healthy and goodbye.